listening to Real Estate Insiders Radio, featuring successful real estate insiders, influencers, and trendsetters, sharing proven tips and strategies to help you navigate the complex world of real estate right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode. I'm your host, Richard Kai Mosca. Today's guest is Cheryl Simon, principal at Benoit Meisner & Simon. She assists both buyers and sellers either in their home search or to market their home for sale. With over 20 years in the business, her expertise in helping them achieve their goals in a most seamless and professional way is paramount to her. Cheryl's in-depth knowledge of the market and her unparalleled service ranks her and her partner as the number one team in Massachusetts in closed sales volume. With over 90% of her business based on past client referrals, Cheryl's reputation as one of the most esteemed and well-recognized professional in her field is a credit to her success. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. Thank you, Rick, for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the endorsements. It's my pleasure. Now, all right, Cheryl, to begin, could you tell our audience what led you into real estate? Was it something you always knew you wanted or did you just happen, you know, like stumble into it? You know, I would have to say it was a combination of both of those. I had graduated with a teaching degree when I got out of college. Those jobs were really scarce. And I had got into insurance, which I really never loved, didn't um, enjoy. It was a paycheck. And on a whim, a friend of mine, I had got married. Subsequently, I had uh, two small children. And subsequently, a friend of mine had said, let's take a real estate course. So it was just purely a whim. And I said, sure, let's do that. And when we did, I enjoyed learning about real estate. I enjoyed the process of um, how buyers and sellers end up, um, you know, Purchasing and selling their homes. And when I went to purchase my own home, myself, I really worked with two brokers that I thought were fine. They were good, but not until I had my third experience with the broker that I purchased my home with did I really uh, realize the quality of a good broker, the difference it makes in the purchasing process for me. Um, so after I took my course and purchased my house, I just knew that that would be a career path that I would enjoy doing. I love people. I love working with people. I love hearing about their stories, their needs. So I just thought it was a good match for me. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I guess you kind of like take the personal approach to your clients. You, you, you really take it to heart and you try to help them the best way you can. Now, let me ask you this. Do you specialize in a certain type of real estate? The community that I purchased my home in um, is in the Metro West area. It's a suburb called Weston, Massachusetts. Not Western, but Weston, W-E-S-T-O-N. And it happens to be a luxury community. So it just happened to be that I wanted with two smaller children to work in the community that my kids were growing up with. I thought my sphere of influence and networking would certainly help me, you know, in that regard as well. So it just made sense. It is a luxury market. So, yes, I do work in the luxury market. But that being said, um, I've sold condos as low as 200000 and I have sold homes in the $16 million price range. So there is, you know, many houses low and high and in between. So, you know, I think that's the, the answer that would best describe you know, my services. Oh, that's great. Now, could you tell our audience how you help your clients when it comes to buying and selling of, say, luxury properties? You know, what do you do for, for your audience? Well, you know, I think of luxury properties, um, every community um, or the ones that I work in anyways, um, oftentimes the market that I happen to be in, uh, we work in, I also have another office in Wellesley, Mass., so Weston and Wellesley. Those are really high-end, premier towns, great school systems, great commute to Boston. Um, and so people will choose those because they are luxury communities and they can afford to live in those communities. 
you know, it wouldn't be any different the way I would treat somebody buying a luxury home versus my daughter's friend who's buying her first condo for 300000 I feel like it's such an important process to purchase either your first home or your second or third home that it's not really the process that makes it different. It's the people that you're engaging with that make it different. It's really more based on what their needs are. And that's, you know, really paramount for me to find out more about what their criteria is. Oh, that, that's great to know that you just treat everybody exactly the same and just do the best you can for them. Yeah, now, I don't discriminate. No, no, that's great. Now, when it comes to your real estate career, what personal attributes, traits, or qualities do you think have contributed the most to your success? And let us know, how did you develop these? I think they were innate um, traits that I already had. So I think that's the best answer to give you. And what are those? For me, uh, you know, any time I am making a purchase, whether it be a piece of jewelry, a piece, you know, a, a piece of um, artwork, I always feel that I'm in sales, obviously, you're selling properties. Um, I always want to know that whoever I am working with or who's working with me, I want them to treat me with a integrity. I want them to treat me honestly. I think that's paramount to anything. And I want to have a trusting relationship with that person. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've searched for, a, you know, a little trinket, a piece of jewelry, and you go into the jewelry store and the person says, you know, you pick out something, can I see it? And they're like, oh, my God, that's my favorite piece. And I'm thinking, okay, that's probably not the person I want to work with because there's, you know, 10,000 pieces of jewelry and I just happen to stumble upon her favorite piece. So to me, it's all about my integrity. It's about my honesty. It's about treating them fairly. It's about giving them the respect and the dignity that I would expect when I am purchasing. Sounds so good. I think it just comes natural to me. So it's not like it's, I have to force myself to be that way. It is me. That's very good. Now, you've been very successful. And now it seems with any level of success, there will always be some adversity and hurdles that will pop up. So if you could please discuss what were some of the major adversities and trials you had to overcome to achieve your goals? Well, you know, I started my career with a um, larger corporate company. And um, that was a great benchmark for me. It was a great learning curve for me. I learned a lot being there. But I also learned that there are better ways to do business. There were often excuses as to why we couldn't be in a certain publication, why we couldn't do this, why we couldn't do that. And I am not the type that like to make excuses. I, I want to deliver. And I think that was an obstacle that I had to learn to deal with and to compensate for. And after a while, you get tired of that because, again, my, you know, claim to fame really is in delivering the best possible service for my clients. And when I have to make excuses as to why they can't be in a certain publication, why they can't, um, you know, be in a magazine or, or a local newspaper because they were in last week, that wasn't resonating well with me. And uh, there were two people that I knew would make great partners and we would get together and talk about wouldn't it be great to start our own company and deliver better service for our clients because it, it, it takes a lot of time and energy and as you might expect and you want to have you know uh, a good experience for those clients and it was in 2010 that we took the leap of faith and started our own company and I think that took care of all the obstacles that I had dealt with you know in my prior company that I worked with. Oh, that sounds good. Now, yeah, these roadblocks didn't stop you, obviously, what you just said. Now, what kept you going despite these obstacles? You know, why didn't you give up? Was it your personality, your business drive? What was it? You know, it's funny. I, I don't think um, giving up that is, is that easy for me. 
um, I have to really, really, really be pushed to my limit to say, you know, there's something I could be doing better. And, it, you know, it, it is a very daunting experience, you know, when you've been with a company. I had been for 18 years with a large company, a large real estate company. Um, but after so many years of, you know, not really losing business, but I felt losing, you know, clients' faith in my ability to get things done for them wasn't, you know, sitting well with me. So it, I would say it probably took me 10 years longer than it should have to take that leap of faith. And um, when I did, I knew that it, it was the right thing for me and it should have been done sooner than rather than um, later. But it just happened to be that um, it's hard to leave a big company when you have so many listings, you know, so... Oh, I understand. Yeah. Now, could you tell our audience, what is your vision for your business over the next five years? What do you want it to be five years from now? You know, I'm really good at reinventing myself. So one thing I did, of course, as we discussed, I started my own company. Um, even starting my own company, you know, I we have 86 brokers to date with the two companies. We're always looking to expand our company. We're looking in different territories to expand our company, different communities. So that would be, you know, part of the bigger scope that, you know, for the business, for my own personal business, because I'm still a very active real estate agent. I'm always reinventing myself every year, probably after, you know, the holidays and the start of the new year. I always develop new strategies for myself, and mostly it is to do with past clients because I always feel that my past clients are the best avenue to new and future business. So one year I started sending roses for my first year and for their first year anniversary in their new home. You know, just a little reminder about. You know, I'm remembering you. It's been a year because, you know, business moves on and they move on and they're, you know, tied into the community. But I want them to know that I'm still thinking about them and um, I want them to hopefully think of me when one of their friends is looking to purchase or to sell their home. I also have a um, social media web page. And, you know, if they've just purchased, they're still on my list, but oftentimes they're not looking at real estate. They've already bought. I don't want to send them or inundate them with new properties that I'm listing or sold or pending. You know, they've already purchased. They're not that interested in that. But I will bring expert panels onto my website, invite them to do an article on ice stamps. Well, that would be interesting to someone that just purchased a home. <laughs> Living in New England, we get ice stamps. Um, I will give out like a season, not a season pass, but a, you know, Red Sox tickets um, for an upcoming game that I have, you know, the available tickets to, you know, to give out. So I'm always trying to keep them on my website um, and interested in something and not always about real estate. It could be about interior designing. You know, I have great interior decorators and I have them tell my audience, my my um, Facebook friends and my past clients about what is new in uh, interior decorating trends. So all of that, you know, that would be important information if they are going to do some work on the house that they just purchased. Yeah, that sounds good because you don't always have to have interesting content and not just a sales pitch like you said. So that's really exactly. good. Exactly. So I guess from listening to what you just told me, the referrals is a big and major part of your of your business because it's always better to take care of your past clients than always try to find new ones all the time. You need help coming up with those new clients. Am I correct? You always are looking for new business. I always say when I get rid of one key, I'm looking to replace it with another key, yes. So always looking for um, new business. I, I think, you know, social events, you have to stay current, you have to stay social you know, I, I try to do a lot of um, fundraising events. I try to just keep my name and myself very visible in the community. And, you know, by doing that, you know, people still remember that you are in the business and that you, you know, they, they, they're happy to refer business to you. And I'm not, 
Hashem passport too. You know, do you know do you know anyone? Do you have any friends that are looking to um, list or sell? I'll often talk, talk about a buyer I'm working with. And everyone I always find, no matter what party or event you're at, want to talk about real estate and the trends and what's going on in real estate. So I'm always happy to be the expert on that. I bet you this is an issue. A lot of times a seller will go on like a, one of those online sites like Zillow and so forth, and they'll get what they – that site tells them what their property is worth, but that's not always what it is worth in real life world, in the real life, is it? It's definitely not, and you know, I think of Zillow uh, as more of a almost a formula company. It's an internet-based company, and so you know, what they're trying to do is to determine value of a home based on more of a square footage basis. What they don't do is they don't interpret the information. Does it have you know, a new kitchen? Does it have a, a pool? Does it have a renovated um, addition? Is it in a great location? All of those things um, have not been looked at by a professional. So they're just trying to target price ranges based on certain neighborhood comps, but we're not living in a track house neighborhood where you can just plug in and you know, an upgraded stove or refrigerator and then calculate that easily. You know, it really depends upon, you know, you can have two very different houses. You could have two houses next to each other and one has been totally renovated and one hasn't. And um, one might have air conditioning, one doesn't. One might have a new heating system and one doesn't. So, you know, it's really, you know, I think buyers or I should say sellers in particular do like to use it because oftentimes, Zillow estimates tend to be a little bit higher than the true value of what the home sells for. So it's just, you know, one indicator, but it's it's not the only, just as people would think that, you know, an assessed value, a town assessed value is where the house is going to sell. They often sell much higher and they often sell much lower. They're not always on target or very rarely are they. And that's why they need a great agent to guide them through the process. Now, this has been all great information. And I, I have one final question, though. If you were to get a call from a family member in another state wanting to sell their home, what advice would you give them about selecting an agent who can best serve their needs? If somebody, a family member, had called me specifically, I would, for a family friend or a family member, our company is part of and affiliated with a luxury portfolio and leading real estate of the world. So luxury portfolio deals with more of the upper end luxury properties and leading real estate of the world is um, below 1.5 million. So, you know, there's many homes and communities that would fit into that category as well. Through this elite network that we were invited into, you have to have a certain closed volume sale in order to even be part or affiliated with this company. They're represented in 50 um, countries, and they're all over the United States as well. So I can tap in for them through this networking that I have and find out who would be a good fit for my family uh, member or friend that is re- relocating, and then I would have that member talk to the manager, discuss what their needs are in relocating, and ask them who they thought would be a good fit for them. You know, once you're in a community, oftentimes people, you know, names of good agents, they, they, they don't stay under the radar. You could go into any community and pretty much once you're there, you could go to a local Starbucks um, or Dunkin' Donuts and say, you know, gee, you know, sit down and have a cup of coffee and talk to somebody and say, just coming into the, you know, this area, would you recommend any real estate agencies or agents? There's lots of great ways to find a great agent to work with. And, and, you know, for the most part, you need to, again, develop a very good trusting relationship um, with that person. And I'm always here as a resource for people. People contact me even when it's not within my immediate area to get advice, and I'm always a helping hand there as well. 
Great. Now, let me ask you, how can someone who needs a real estate agent find out more about you and how you can help? Well, you know, it's much easier today than it had been when I started my career because we didn't have the available um, social media. So if they were to go on to Instagram, if they were going to go on to Cheryl Simon uh, Real Estate, um, Cheryl Simon Real Estate on Facebook, if they just Googled my name, there's going to be 10 or 12 different um, social media avenues for me or hopefully good agents out there are doing this as well. And they could learn all about me. And what I think is really important for agents to realize, too, is that, you know, people want to hear about not just you, but they want to hear about the communities that you work in. They want to hear about experiences that buyers and sellers have had with you. And so I have probably 15 or 20 testimonials of past clients. And, you know, when I sit here and tell you about my integrity and my honesty and the way that I work with people, they would find that on my website because there's a common thread of people that never met each other that are sitting there um, saying a lot of the same things about their experience working with me. So I think that is, um, I do blogs, I do all kinds of um Again, social media, I'm always at open houses. I'm meeting new clients that way. So there's plenty of opportunities uh, to find me. Okay, Cheryl, this has been a very enlightening interview. And I would like to personally thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share your real estate experiences and knowledge with our listeners. I thank you for inviting me onto the show, and I hope I'm able to help a future client through this avenue. Thank you so much for interviewing me. Thanks for listening, everybody. And definitely reach out to Cheryl if you need assistance. Until our next show, have a great day. And I look forward to talking with you soon. This has been another episode of Real Estate Insiders Radio. To hear all episodes featuring our hand-picked real estate insiders, visit us online at realestateinsidersradio.com. 